Happy Monday, Broncos country. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Broncos. I'm Bree Maestas here as always with Zach Seegers and Joey Richards. Guys, how are you? Bree, I'm doing fantastic today. I'm gearing up for the Nuggets to win the championship at the moment. That's what I'm gearing up for, um, getting ready for the parade. I might just go ahead and buy the materials beforehand because I'm feeling confident. I don't, I don't think these other teams, Lakers fans are going berserk swearing to god that they're going to beat the nuggets in the first round it's not facts it's fake um so yeah I, i'm just gearing up for a nuggets championship how, how are you doing zach <laughs> what, wait what materials do you need for a championship parade i probably am gonna go get a hat or <laughs> okay. maybe i i might stop at lids and just like nba champions in the side of it or something like that and post it on twitter and hopefully go viral that's the plan. Zach, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I like the virality plan. I think you got to go all out, though, and get the tattoo, though, Joey, if you want to do that. Should I do it for the, the retweets? Do we think I do it for the retweets? My first tattoo is a nice I, I, I don't think you should because I think it's always a jinx. I don't know if I've ever seen the person, like, go viral for the tattoo and then their team ends up winning. I think it like has always gone bad, a hundred percent of the. Like I could easily be forgetting one, but I don't know if I've ever seen that pan out for some. So what if I got a championship tattoo of every other team? <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Do the rest of the playoff field, including the play You gotta do the play in. Okay. So I think you gotta get yeah, nineteen tattoos. Right. Just a leg sleeve of losses, the big old L. And if anybody would argue, it could also be a W. Uh, jokes aside, the Nuggets have been exciting. I uh, got to see the game on Sunday. That was fun. I was shirking my Easter responsibilities. Happy to be back here with all of you on a fantastic Monday. And we asked everybody, including our Discord, uh, for some questions for today. We're going to do a mailbag episode here for Let's Talk Broncos. We got a lot of really fun questions, so I'm excited excited to jump into those just waiting for people to walk into the chat christopher hart is first saying he he struts into the room welcome to let's talk broncos christopher hart if you'd like to join the conversation go ahead and jump on over to the mile high sports youtube or facebook where we are live and we'll get we will get to most of your questions and comments but again i have clicking duties so i'll see if i'll get to them guys are you ready for the mailbag episode Absolutely. And just a quick little addendum. Uh, ones that we don't get to, there's a good chance we'll get to them in the future because there were questions we liked that I just don't think we'll have time for uh, looking at you, Cal. Yes. <laughs> Shouts out to Cal. Thanks for watching the show. We also do have a, we had a handy dandy timer <laughs> I don't know where that I, I was that. going to start, but uh, Joey there Richards and I will uh, take it from here. Oh, there's Lock that. me up, Bree. Oh, he's back. He's back. Like you think you could just leave and I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. We can just... <laughs> we'll continue from there. We didn't get started without you. We were waiting for people to trickle on in. Let's get started with it. First question of the evening in here. I'm gonna click off the banner so I can read it. Joshua Williams asks, What do you guys think Vance Joseph will run? What it will it be what he ran in Arizona or something closer to what we've been running, or a mix of both? Guys, it's an interesting question considering I think a lot of the confusion around advanced Joseph Heyer was maybe that Arizona's defense wasn't exactly what you would want to see the Broncos do. However, I don't think it was that bad. He took the necessities that he had on that roster and was able to generate some production from them. What do you think Vance jo Joseph is going to run here with the Denver Broncos? Do you think it's going to be some of the old, a little bit of the same, or a blend of both? Go ahead, Zach. I'll let you take this one. Lob it yeah. up. It sounds good. And really quick on the timer, this is a, a new mailbag feature uh, to keep us, you know, at, on time running through stuff. So we don't get uh, wasting time back. right now. Oh, oh, bad clock management. <laughs> Call me Nate Hack. Um, uh, I, I think it's going to be mostly what he's done in Arizona. I don't know. I haven't seen too much variation. I think he's smart enough to, I don't know, hopefully there's some carryover, but me saying that is, wishful thinking more than anything i haven't really seen him do anything different i think when you look at the tree he came from it lines up with kind of the cover one cover three kind of hyper or not hyper aggressive but aggressive defense we've seen in arizona um i think that's what he ran in miami for the most part um 
So I don't know. I'm hopeful he looks at what's worked here and the talent on the roster and how it kind of corresponds with those defensive philosophies. And he continues to roll with that. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I, I think it's very possible. He uh, just runs the, his, his, the Vance Joseph defense. Cause that's really all I've seen. him. Run. Yeah. I do not expect anything different from Vance Joseph. I expect Vance Joseph to run his defense. Cause that's what he's done. Now last year, the Dolphins were hyper aggressive. It felt like their offense, especially at the beginning of the season when two was healthy and that offense was going, was that we're either going to go. What was that? Cardinals? The Cardinals. My bad. I'm sorry about that. The Cardinals' offense was hyper aggressive. So I don't know. I I just um, I I think that I I, I just don't expect him to run anything different because he's been doing the same thing in the league. So. So speed, aggression, uh, versatility with his uh, line and secondary units. I think a lot of the same is probably the direction that you will see. Um, Christopher Hart says the timer is the countdown until the world ends. Thanks, Christopher Hart. Colton yeah. Cooper in the chat. They gave up a million points last year. Uh, maybe that's a concern that I have, but we already talked a little bit about what the defense and may or may not regress here for the Denver Broncos. A couple more points scored probably might just be a regression to the mean. Hopefully it's not a uh, spelling out, um, more points scored for the other teams. Uh, guys, I think that's a, a pretty good answer to that question. I want to thank Joshua Williams again for asking that one. I think he did so over on Twitter. And if you'd like to do so, please tweet at the LTB podcast. Next question we have from Wyatt. I like this one. Which position or positional groups, at least on paper, now have a smaller impact on team success under Sean and Vance than they may have had previously? It's a really interesting question. The first one that pops into my head is one that was struggling maybe a little bit last year. Um, but I think, I don't know, guys. With Russell Wilson coming in on a year or two, I would have to say that wide receivers may shirk some of the responsibility over to uh, the run game and the, uh, the, the passing game within that run game. And then also tight ends coming in who are going to be those big body targets that Sean Payton likes to focus on a little bit of blocking ability. I just see the running backs taking over here. I don't see a whole lot of throwing that ball uh, consistently, but I think I'm more so hesitant than I am positively uh confirmed in that uh that route of thinking guys how do you feel about uh the impact and success under sean and vance um and positional groups affected by such i fully agree um on wide receiver i think that's a great point brie uh look at the investment in the blocking tight end i think you're going to see more greg dulcich this year as well uh, the investment in the fullback position too um we're going to see a lot of 12 personnel i think a lot of like 22 personnel there's not going to be as many three wide receiver sets this year as there were last year um so i i fully agree on that front it is going to be a more run heavy look the one that immediately jumps out to me is defense it kind of ties in with the last question cornerbacks uh or, or not corner i they're going to have a larger impact on team success uh smaller impact safeties um when you look at the uh, Fangio scheme, it makes safeties kind of weirdly valuable. You need them to be able to do everything. They need to be good players in run defense. Um, they need to be good coverage players. They need to be very intelligent um, because they're, you know, dropped down in certain looks and then they're running back in those two high shells. It looks so multiple. It could be anything. So you need those guys to be able to do a little bit of everything. Um I think Vance Joseph's scheme is a little more simplistic and a little more, I don't know, classical. And uh, most NFL defenses, uh, the safety is one of the least important positions. So I think that's going to become more of a thing next year. Uh, uh, on the flip side, quarterback is going to become way, way, way more valuable if they're running like pure Vance Joseph stuff. Corner. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to go with Bree on this and say wide receivers. I, I think, I think that third wide receiver in specific, those top two might be doing a lot, but the Broncos, you have to think they felt comfortable. It, it feels like for a lot of this off season, 
to downgrade at wide receiver. That's something they felt comfortable doing is trading a wide receiver for a pick. Right. So, and, and then Zach brought it up. They actually invested into a tight end. That is a run blocking guy. I think Chris Manhurts didn't have more than it was either seven or six receptions on the entire year. He's brought here for one reason, one reason only, and it's to block. I think Third that wide receiver is going to be, block, be brought back. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that, that's what I think, that third wide receiver will not have as much production next year. I feel like you're all probably right there. That also – does that not point to the signs why maybe there was no aggressive push for maybe signing and or trading away in the wide receiver market that existed in free agency this offseason? Or do you think it doesn't matter there that it would have been a plug and play and it would have been fine to switch one out for the other? I think Callaway was brought in as I, mm -hmm. I almost think Breed, just adding on to your point, Callaway was brought in, I think, just because the Broncos feel comfortable moving off of somebody. Like I think at the trade deadline, I'm still thinking that that's probably something that's going to happen. The Broncos are going to end up trading a wide receiver. That's what I'm under the influence of. Um, you know, for all the talk, if it takes the right pick, blah, blah, blah. Everyone likes to say that. You know, every GM listens to calls. That's 1,000% true. All GMs listen to calls. But we don't hear about it. Fans don't hear about it. Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter aren't tweeting about it unless there is some motivation there. You know, they don't want to just be completely wrong. They're going to tweet it out because they think it might be something that could happen. Um, so I, I, while they might not have the – value that they want in a trade at this moment, I think it could come later. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think that it's part of the reason why, you know, that third wide receiver is probably just not as valuable. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. And also I think they – I could easily see them feeling like they have the room to make one of those trades. Uh, I think wide receiver is one of the draft positions where we – draft positions where we've seen a higher hit rate, you know, even down the board, even with mid-round guys stepping in and contributing. And I think the Broncos could reasonably feel like right now, not even including KJ Hamler because of his, you know, injury doubts. Um, I think you could feel like you go five deep at wide receiver if you're the Denver Broncos. Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Kendall Hinton, and Marquez Callaway. Um, I, I looking at Callaway, Sutton, and Patrick, I would understand going like, hey, if we could flip Sutton for a solid pick, let's do it. Um, I kind of expect one of those. The more I think about it, I just kind of think like Sean Payton hasn't always been honest to the media. I don't know why we're all just like taking him at his word. Um, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think they could totally trade a wide receiver. The way that you go about saying that always makes me laugh. It could have been just been like, oh, you know, people say things all the time. And we, how much stock are you going to put into it? You're like, Sean Payne specifically. <laughs> I am a Kevin James cinephile. What can I say? <laughs> that is that's quite all right with me. Uh, D Bronx just joining the chat over here. Sorry I'm late. My kid was a real jerk at bedtime. We appreciate your service uh, as a father. Uh, kids are welcome to watch the show, just not recommended. But if you would like to get in the chat as you're joining along with us and you've put your kids to bed, please go ahead and jump on over to the Mile High Sports YouTube or Facebook so we can get your questions and comments highlighted. You can see a timer up there in the corner just by Zach's head. Don't worry. It's not the countdown to the end of the world. We're just trying to get through these questions. There's so many of them. And we want to make sure we're appropriately on time. The next one here is about Elway's departure. Is Elway's departure, and this is from Adan Diaz over on Twitter, uh, is Elway's departure from the team a good or bad thing for the Broncos moving forward? You know, time served. I think that there's a lot of great reflection for John Elway's time and tenure with the Denver Broncos, uh, basically being responsible for three Super Bowl wins. I don't think it's a good or a bad thing. I think ascribing a positive or negative uh, to a departure of someone who's well respected within the community and the organization probably is true to some people and not to others. So really depends on moving forward. It's not like he was cast away or fired. He decided to step away after having a consulting role the last couple of years. I, I'm not mad at it. And I also don't think that it's good or bad. I think it's just time to move on and go play some golf and enjoy the time that you still have and worry less about Denver Broncos football. I think we all kind of wish we were John Elway at certain points last season. Guys, how do you feel about John Elway's departure from the team headed into the 2023 season? 
It's good. Sorry. Uh, it's good. Um, I, I think you need to, uh, they need a total refresher. And I, I think they'll get to that point if Russ flames out this year. But I think we just haven't seen a true kind of rebuild in Denver. They keep kind of like clasping to uh, or grasping at their um, uh, 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 2015 success, I feel. Like keep banking on like good defense and finding like a game manager at quarterback. And that's just not the way to really win at the NFL level. Um, and I think finally they've tried to kind of shake some of those ways, which is good. And uh, away leaving is good. But I don't know how much say he had these last two seasons, if I'm being honest. I'd say it's very minimal. Um, and these last two seasons, I think you can look at some good things the front office has done and some bad things the front office has done. A lot like the way tenure, so I, I mixed bad. Yeah. I mean, right now, I don't think it feel, means anything. If we're talking about when George Payton was hired, that's when it meant something. Let's be honest here. I don't think LA was consulting anybody or anything. <laughs> it was a great position to have. Hey, good, good on LA. He's been out of there for a little bit. He hasn't been doing a damn thing for a bit now. I'm going to be honest. Now it's just official. That's all that has happened is that John LA is officially gone. It means now nothing. At the time it happened, I thought it was good. Um, it was time to move on. I give credit to John LA for, you know, luring Peyton Manning here, helping that. Um, building a defense that was awesome and fantastic and we, he went to two super bowls in his time but it went downhill fast so it's time to move on broncos hired george payton john elway wasn't doing anything when they hired george payton yeah and now we're here and it's official that's all that i think happened we have a severe depletion of john elway uh <laughs> drops audio clips uh, i think we need to add some there so he can live on in the hearts and spirit of all the ltb community but I, I'm still sticking with it. I don't think you can, you can say good or bad, but I can understand why it might be necessary. going to go to D Bronx's question. He's in the chat right now uh, talking about how we have too much energy for bedtime. That might be true. Do not plug us in and listen to us to fall asleep. This is not the pod in order to do so. He asked the question, how do you see the rest of the running back room being built from here? Is P Ryan going to be a bell cow until Javante is healthy? Or do you see them bringing in another running back to have a real role in this backfield? I Love what this is making my brain do because I had to dive deep in. So I'm going to actually throw it over to Zach. Zach, I like the head nod from you. Tell me how you feel about the running back room. You're muted. We'll just let him talk into the. Wow. Bummer. Uh, I know I'm the Nate Hackett over here. Um, uh, I, I think they have to invest more in it. Um, and I do wonder if you're going to see more of like, a, another pass catching back. I don't know if P Ryan's really that like he can do some of that stuff. I think he is a third down back, but I don't know if he's the guy you're throwing out in the slot and doing all of the uh, Sean Payton stuff with. Um, I'm worried about uh, Javante Williams truly being healthy. Um, uh, I don't know. It's just, you have to invest more in it. I wouldn't be surprised, frankly, if it's one of their first draft picks in the third round. Um, Sean Payton has put a premium on the running back position multiple times in the past, um, as has George Payton. Uh, I think that's one thing they could agree on, especially as you look at this running back room. You don't know what the future of Javante Williams looks like. Uh, I'm going to save all the Samaj P. Ryan stuff for Joey Richards because I know he's about to go off here in a second. Um, but I don't know. you got to add more to that room. It's just – it is – wildly shallow right now and that's like even assuming that Javante Williams is Javante Williams I, I, I think even in that case you'd need to add someone maybe we're talking an undrafted player a seventh round pick but I I still hope they could uh add now I think I wouldn't be surprised if it's a premium pick um it's going to be a player that it, it you could draft Char Charbonnet in the third round and I wouldn't be surprised if he like takes yeah, the most yeah. snaps at running back uh his rookie year like they could view that as, hey, it's a third-round pick, right? A third round's a reasonable place to take a running back, and this is an impact position that can help us win right now this year. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that – so where I disagree a little bit, Zach, with you is that, you know, he isn't the guy you put in the slot or whatever, but I don't know what else you would bring him in for other than, than to be the primary third-down back. So if they didn't 
you know, like th- if they were to bring in a guy that could do that, it's kind of redundant because who are you taking off the field? Um, P. Ryan brings a lot that that pro- pro- guy probably doesn't bring. Like his blocking expertise are aw- is awesome, and then he's also just a really great check down guy um, on that third down roll. Honestly, some Broncos fans, it feels like just because I think it's a weight thing and a size thing. They think we're going to get Derrick Henry, a guy that's going to just pound it and be awesome in as a two down running back. Uh, first, second down, we're just going to give him the ball and he's going to be a bell cow. I don't think that's who he is. I really don't. I think he's made his niche as a third down back who can play those other ones, but you're going to want somebody else there. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely think the Broncos are going to draft another guy. I think they're going to draft a guy that might get more carries than Pirine. I absolutely think that. I think Pirine will have the majority of the receptions on this team. I think this other running back will have the majority of carries on the team. Um, or that's the way I would do it, and I imagine that's how the Broncos would do it. I, I, I just It's hard for me to imagine the Broncos and Sean Payton thinking that Samaji Pirine is a bell cow back. I think, though, we can all agree that the running back position uh... – Seems second from dis- seconds from disaster. Um, as we think about a little bit of lack of depth there, also no confirmation of whether or not Latavius Murray will be back with the team. So that leaves a couple of question marks. Uh, Boone, obviously being a free agent, still we'll find out closer to the draft who the Broncos are going to potentially bring back from that dwindled list of free agents who are still kind of sitting out there. I just have question marks surrounding what kind of depth you can get there, and then if it does come come from the draft um what kind of production are you seeing out of those running backs if you're going to be a run heavy run often uh run your socks off type of offense um another question that comes to mind is do you target a bigger name like uh (laughs) Zeke Elliott I don't know like (laughs) I'm not I'm not on board for that because I I have I had him too many times in fantasy, just let me down here. So um, I don't know how I feel so much about that, but uh, I've yeah. traded, I've traded with people like you many times before for Zeke Alley, Elliot, just because everyone hates him. So I might just throw out a little fourth rounder for Zeke or something like that, a fifth rounder for Zeke and just get some. Isn't get he, some well, he's out there on the free agent market, isn't he? Yeah. I'm talking about, we're talking about fantasy football. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I <laughs> Thank you, Zach. You're suck. muted, Seegers. Hold on one I second. <laughs> you're I'm... okay. Uh, Cooper's a fan of P. Ryan, was a top 14 guy in targets last year for running backs, and I think he was 13th for receptions. Yeah. I liked the yes. pickup. I also think that's important because Sean Payton's going to want to focus on the ability to use those running backs in the passing game, which will be so helpful and beneficial for Russell Wilson moving forward. And also what a lot of what I alluded to with the wide receivers, probably having a lesser role going forward, less targets to go around for everyone more in a running back focus scheme, Joey Richards. Yeah, no, Samaji P Ryan, the way I would describe him is he's a star in his role. That, that, that's the, the phrase I would use to describe Samaji P. Ryan. He's a role player, but he's a star in his role. He's really good at what he does well. And when you put him in position to consistently do those things well, um, Samaji P. Ryan should be a really good signing for the Broncos. Yeah, awesome. I'm on agree. Sorry. Um, no, you're okay. Going to jump on over to question from Frankie Abbott over on Twitter. Frankie's Films wants to know, hypothetically, if the Raiders were to move up to three, which of the top quarterbacks would scare you the most in Vegas? Uh, so I'm honestly like not factoring in the McDaniels of it all and all of that. I, I think, uh, uh, though, I think I can make a case there if you guys disagree on the coach element. Um, but it's Anthony Richardson, I think. I think it has to be Anthony Richardson because uh, he's the scariest prospect in this quarterback class. He's an absolute menace. He's uh, the most physically gifted quarterback we've ever seen at the Combine, scoring a, a 10.0 RAS, uh, which means he's in the 100th percentile <laughs> um, uh, for the quarterback position, just an absolute monster of an athlete. Uh, personally, I really believe in his development. He's my QB one um, uh, with what little I've studied this class. I just, I, I believe in the talent and I have enough questions about um, young, uh, 
that's the guy I would want to see in Vegas, especially when you have like Herbert and Mahomes in the division already. If Anthony Richardson hits, you're looking at going up against absolute aliens at quarterback for a third of your schedule every year for the next 10 to 15 years. Like that's a nightmare. Even like with Sean, you're going to have to build an insane roster and find a pretty dang good quarterback yourself to even compete. And even when you do like the AFC West might just cannibalize itself every year for the next 15 years, which if you don't want to see a chiefs dynasty or I don't think we'd ever see a chargers dynasty, um, but like th this might help prevent that. Um, but uh, man, it, it'd just be a nightmare. I don't see how you're winning like the division more than twice over the next like two decades, if that or not, but like decade and a half. It would, oh, I can't, nightmare scenario. Please like don't draft a quarterback. To Vegas Raiders. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I agree with you, Zach. I think scariest is a specific word, right? The scariest to me would be Anthony Richardson just because his ceiling is so high. Now, Zach, I agree with you, but I think it is. Josh McDaniels does play a part for me. He absolutely does just because, hey, the quarterback position is one in which more people miss on than they do good with, right? And Josh McDaniel has done Pretty good with quarterbacks in the past. Obviously, Tom Brady, right? Matt Castle when he came in. You remember that big deal the Chiefs gave Matt Castle? Who remembers Kyle Orton? Even when he came to Denver, he that was the best stretch of his career. He's done better with quarterbacks. Um, Damn. He's missed with quarterbacks. So Josh McDaniels with a young guy. And, hey, people forget this. Josh McDaniels was also the guy that drafted Tim Tebow. He's not afraid of a running-styled quarterback. That's He's proven that. He took Tim Tebow with a first-round pick, which nobody else would have done. Um, so, yeah, it, it's scary. I don't wouldn't like it. And I will say any of the quarterbacks would scare me, though. If one of those people went down there, any of them would freak me out. Yeah, I think that I the scariest um, uh, quotations there from Frankie – I'm, I would be scared for Anthony Richardson, too, if it were to go the other direction, if it were instead 180 degrees the other way and Josh McDaniels fumbles it away and misuses him in a way that just stunts his ability to grow in this league as a really high ceiling quarterback. That would be pretty scary to me. Um, I would hope that he would do well, but then would have to root against him every time uh, the Broncos faced him. So that to me seems potentially very scary. Thank you to Joey Richards and Zach Seegers for turning me on to the Anthony Richardson gang. Yes. Yeah. And one point I wanted to add to what Joey said, because I thought it was a great point, but Cam Newton too, like, yeah. uh, and it wasn't the most amazing offense. And I think some of that was Cam got injured pretty quick and was well past his prime, but like the first, I want to say like month of that season or so before he got beat up, they had like the top rushing offense in the NFL or one of the top ones. And I think they were running RPOs or run option, something like that. I think QB power at like the highest rate. It was a wildly different Patriots attack. And it was, again, until like Cam kind of gave out, it was a functional one. I think Anthony Richardson in a lot of ways reminds me of like a younger Cam Newton um, taking games over the same way in college. I think he's a lot raw and won't be able to contribute quite as immediately, but uh, or at that same high level quite as immediately. But yeah, I, I think Josh McDaniels has shown the ability to collaborate with all different types of quarterbacks, including some that, play similarly oh uh have another question here we still have some time on the clock cal i think asked this over in discord um additionally but much less importantly thank you for the caveat do you think the first pick could tell us who is making the draft decisions and what do you think that first pick looks like if sean is decisively in charge and if george is decisively in charge of the draft uh Ooh, go That's ahead. a really interesting question. It's, go ahead, Zach. Nice. It's, a good question. it's a great question. And as you can see, it's preceded by additionally, but much less importantly, that's because uh, he said some stuff that's not podcast safe. So if you want to go see that, you have to go over to the LTV <laughs> Discord. Um, yeah, uh, but his second question was podcast safe. So we'll talk about that. Um, uh, I think... Man, it's going to be tough to tell this first year, I think, because they're going to be talking about the whole collaborative thing. 
And I think both are going to be looking to win now. I don't think either is looking at like a long-term rebuild. I'd say the one thing that might tell the hand is if you see a pick that emphasizes a long-term rebuild. Um, uh, uh, I don't know what that would be. So a place that's not an immediate impact guy because George Payton's kind of looking, I think, to save his job this season. And Sean Payton's got all the security in the world. The other thing that jumps out to me would be like secondary versus offensive line. Sean Payton has always prioritized offensive line at a very high level. George Payton so far hasn't really done that in the draft with the Broncos, like hasn't taken a tackle despite that being a consistent need. Um, and uh, the secondary obviously is George Payton's baby. Um, and I don't know how much Sean Payton invested in that in New Orleans. You guys want to know how I'm going to decipher this? The Broncos always have those draft war room YouTube videos that come out that I sit there and watch. That's probably how I'm going to have to decipher this because the needs, like I think both guys, like if you're looking at traditional positional value, right? Like all these analytical people will talk about on Twitter. If you're on there, or if you're a football fan, people will tell you running backs, not important. George Payton, Sean Payton, <laughs> they both beg to differ. They're not afraid to draft a running back early. Um, so if they went running back with their first pick, I would be confused. You know, like, it's hard to tell because it's a third round pick, right? If this was a first round pick, it would be easier to tell. But being that it's a third round pick, I just feel like either could just be like, hey, I'm going to take the best guy. I'm going to take the any, best player available. So, is there any it, chance that the their 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 previous working history and relationships could mean that they've been able and are able to work together to kind of make it a cohesive unit? Or do you think both of them uh, work in a way that's so independent of each other that you don't see that happening with a Peyton Peyton relationship? Yeah, totally I think that's because good, Bree. I think they could work together, but I think someone will have the final say. And that's what I'm curious. Oh, it's Sean. See. It's Who's Sean. the one that... It's Sean. I think it's Sean too, but who's the one that's like, no, George, you're being an idiot right now. I'm taking this guy. I don't care what you have to say. I'm taking this person. Um, traditionally, the GM is that person, but I think with the Broncos, with what they traded, the person that has more leverage, Sean Payton could probably override George Payton a little bit. A thousand percent, yes. He's going to override Sean Payton. And I... I don't know. I think they could totally work together because I think George Payton understands. I think he's an intelligent guy who understands he's in a kind of dicey position right now. And Sean Payton decides whether or not he keeps his job. So I think it's kind of in George Payton's best interest for the relationship to be nice. And uh, I don't know. George Payton can draft good players. And like Sean Payton's proven he can work with GMs as long as they're like doing a good job. Like, got to listen to Sean, but if they're doing a good job, he'll keep them around. It's interesting to me because I, I, I would assume that the general manager would have a lot of say in this area, but Sean Payton obviously needs to come down, establish an ident identity and culture for this team, which he's already done in the offseason and will continue to do throughout the draft. Guys, I think that does it for our questions. Ha looking real quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it looks like that's it for questions that we have it here. Thanks so much for, uh, amusing or sticking there with us. I was looking, I wanted to play the buzzer, buzzer sound to end it. And, and there it goes. It, it died. Okay. Go. All right, guys, that still leaves us for everyone's favorite part of the evening, which is going to be, it, it really is. Cause it's the best segment that we have on the show. Cause it's Joey's question of the day. Stand up, everybody. We're ready. All I right, am so not standing up. I don't. Did I get no? All right. <laughs> um. So we're gonna play this game. We did this last or a couple podcasts ago, I think. I'm going to give you some clues, and this is all based off their Madden rating. And then you're gonna have to give me who the player is. Are you guys ready? I'm sure. gonna give you guys four hints, and then you guys tell me. And then I'll yeah. keep that on after that. Okay. So this player is 6'4". All right. 6'4". He has an 82 speed. He also only has a 32 catch. But has an 81 stiff arm. And I threw one kind of crazy one in there because it's mad and they always do some crazy stuff. 
So again, 6'4", 82 speed. He has an 81 stiff arm, but only a 32 catch. Is it a tight end? 32 catch would be crazy. Do you guess the overall? <laughs> <laughs> the next guess, I will. Throw out oh, name. next you will. You, but you yeah. haven't yet. Yeah. Um, is it Garrett Bowles? Three. For cat? Uh Throw out a name. 32 uh, catch though, so he's not a name. good he's not good at catching. Yeah, he's not good at catching, but how many opportunities? It's got to be like a defensive lineman or something. Exactly. Mm. Six four. He's an eighty one stiff arm though. Okay. Anyways, continue. <laughs> I'm trying. It. It's an it's an edge. It's uh. Oh, you got a Bree. You're so close, right? Come now. on, the big one, the big one, Bree. <laughs> What do you mean? The big You're so close. <laughs> You're so close. Three, I four, don't three, know one. how tall Baron Browning is. Okay, not Baron Browning. Not Baron Browning. Not Baron Browning. The other get the other three. Go. I will give it's you. Not, I already guessed. It's, it's, your it's turn, not Baron sorry. Browning. He's, oh, you did guess. A, oh, Randy yeah. Gregory. Seventy-two overall. Randy Gregory wrong. Damn. Oh, is it a Wazarike? <laughs> All right, more guesses. More ah. guesses. There's an 83 tackle. I don't know what else to give you guys. No, no, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He is also 258 pounds, according to Wikipedia. DJ Jones. Did you say Run. 248? 258. Oh, 258. 258. Um, according to Wikipedia. 258. By the way. Oh, I don't know. What, what is this? What position does this guy play? He's got the University of Ohio Who's State. Ripping? No, he's from University, University of Ohio, Ohio, Ohio State. State. Oh, guys, <laughs> all right. Harris. His name starts with the J. <laughs> Jonathan Cooper. Oh shoot! God. How <laughs> bad is the chat? Jonathan Cooper got it. Right Jonathan now, Cooper though. got it. How many? Oh, they no. got it like it, they didn't get it that soon before. I guess D Bronx was the first, I think. Credit to D Bronx. <laughs> I'm so everyone got it around now. when we did. I don't think it was it was that bad. So, you know. They most they went down the same routes as us. Somebody goes DJ Jones LOL. You know what? You know what threw me off is the 81 stiff arm. I've never seen Jonathan Cooper stiff arm anybody in my life. Um but yeah, that that's that was the one that threw me off. <laughs> Go tweet it and see if he'll uh, pay attention. Two hundred forty-eight yeah, right. pounds. I know. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't listening to the ding. Wait, Christopher Hart, you're now muted in the chat. Appreciate you tuning yeah, what in. What do you mean, Chris? Are you calling DJ Fat? I'm gonna clip. If that I told you show. that he had a six play action pass. Because I have it all. I just have a sports almanac in my head that has everyone's freaking height and weight in there. No, I don't. I'm not a guy. I honestly I have miss the, a, the weight hobbies. The first time I said it too. He I, doesn't. I, by the way. He Frank, doesn't look. He does not look six four on tape. He doesn't no, look six looks four, like and he also items. looks like he weighs a little bit less than your normal lineman would. So you know what? I don't need any of your lip, guys. Where can people find your stuff? Everybody, follow me at Jr. Drafts. Make sure you are subscribing to the Let's Talk Broncos YouTube if you aren't already. It would help us a lot. Share with your friends. Share with your family. Um, help us grow. That's what I want to say. Keep an eye out for uh, my next video that I have coming out. I'm going to work on it tomorrow. And my goal is to finish it tomorrow. So uh, it might happen. It might not. But that's the goal, to finish it tomorrow. So everyone keep an eye out for that. But, Zach, where can they find your work, my man? Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you're checking out Joey's stuff. Uh, and please go over to milehighsports.com. Click on, like, the more thing or, like, any sort of drop-down thing. Looking for the teams. And go to the bus page. Um, I've got tons of uh, coverage over there that I don't – I really don't see anyone else on the bus be doing, like, weekly takeaways on what, like, the most important stuff from practice is happening. Um uh, I, I'm going to have a transfer portal tracker coming out tomorrow talking about the state of the men's and women's basketball team. Um, guess what? It's looking pretty good. But if you want like the rundown on, on all the roster, I, one thing I was really proud about with my Broncos coverage was how I did like these comprehensive rundowns on the roster. I'll say this. I think most everyone, you know, it's a Broncos fan is like kind of familiar with the roster, knows the players here or there. 
the buffs on the other hand are probably super foreign to you because they haven't been good until just now. And you haven't been following these players and you don't know their backgrounds and everything. Go over to milehighsports.com uh, because I'm going to have uh, all the in-depth fish for you on the basketball team and the football team. Yes, highly suggest that you go on over to Mile High Sports, click the Buffs tab, check out Zach Seeger's work. Uh, the chat is hysterical tonight. I just want to give shouts out to them. If you That's would like to know best. what they're talking about, you're going to have to go on over to the Mile High Sports YouTube page and view it over there because it's always a fun time. And that's usually what I'm laughing to off screen. Guys, enjoy your evening. Go follow me on Twitter. I don't want to run through all my stuff. I'm tired today. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.